So good morning, everyone. Welcome to Ahead Academy. Today we'll be discussing uh, some important topics related to general medicine. We will be talking about some disorders of uh, the few of the systems of a body. We'll be talking about how the genetics, uh, you know, is uh, working in our body. What are the diseases related to the genetics? We'll be talking about the disorders of the endocrine system. We'll be talking about certain infections, especially the bacterial infections which affect your body. And uh, we'll also be talking about the diseases of the genital urinary system and uh, the gastrointestinal tract if the time prevails. So first we'll start with the endocrine disorders. Now broadly speaking, endocrine disorders may be subdivided into three groups. Now endocrine, obviously, you know, either the, we all know that the endocrine glands, they secrete the hormones, right? So either there can be uh, less secretion uh, from the endocrine glands, which, is, which will be known as endocrine gland hyposecretion, that would lead to the hormone deficiency. Or there will be endocrine gland hypersecretion, which would lead to the excess of the hormone. And the third uh, you know, cause of the disorder of the system would be obviously nowadays very common cause that would be your cancer or your tumor, which would be benign or malignant of the endocrine glands. But the basic diagnosis of the endocrine diseases may be difficult. It's often not possible to directly assay the hormone levels in the blood, making actually the indirect measurements necessary. So we should know what are the ways to indirectly measure them so as to we can actually diagnose that what is the condition the patient is actually suffering from. This is a basic overview of the human endocrine system where we can see, you know, that uh, uh, topmost in the brain, we have the pineal gland below which we have situated the pituitary gland. Then as we go downwards towards the neck area, we have the thyroid glands and behind the thyroid, we have the parathyroid glands. Then as we move towards the trunk, we have the thymus. This is the thymus that we have. And as we are going downwards at the uh, from the trunk area, um, just above the kidney, we have the suprarenal glands or the adrenal glands, and in between the kidneys, we have the pancreas situated, and then we have ovaries in females and testes in males. So these all glands together they constitute the human endocrine system. So there are two major divisions of the pituitary gland. Because first we are going to start with the pituitary. Okay, so as we can see here that uh, you know. Uh, the pituitary uh, gland, as we can see, is lying in the, you know, uh, sphenoid bone, as we can see. And it is, uh, you know, basically directly connected to the hypothalamus. And surrounding it, we have the diaphragm cella, uh, which is, uh, which has, you know, uh, placed itself very comfortably. The two divisions being the anterior adenohypophysis and the posterior neurohypophysis, right? So the anterior uh, part is going to secrete most of the hormones and we have the posterior part, why we call it as the neurohypophysis because it's going to basically uh, control the neural division. And as you can see here in the picture that the posterior part is directly connected to the hypothalamus as you can see here that this part is you're directly connected to the hypothalamus. Okay. And uh, uh, we also have the middle part that is the, uh, you know, that is the uh, middle uh, hypophysis. And uh, that part, if anybody can tell me which hormone it is secreting, which comes from the median part of the pituitary gland. Anybody can tell me that which is the hormone which comes from the median part of the pituitary gland. So uh, the hormone which is secreted from the median part is your uh, melanocyte stimulating hormone that is governed by the actions of the both the parts. So these are basically the pituitary gland hormones under the direct influence of the hypothalamus. The anterior pituitary is secreting, you know, your thyroid stimulating hormone which is going to go and act on your thyroid gland. Okay. Then it is also secreting it and it is going to release your thyroxin. Then it's secreting your adrenal corticotropic hormone, ACTH, which is going to act on the adrenal cortex and going to produce the 
hormones like cortisol and other hormones okay then growth hormone which is going to act on bone and muscles then gonadotropic hormones like your follicle stimulating hormone fsh and your luteinizing hormone lh which go and act on the reproductive organs then you have your prolactin prl which acts on the mammary glands in the mammals so that they can uh, you know secrete milk to feed their offspring and uh, the median uh, load which i am talking is going to secrete your melanocyte stimulating hormone okay this is your melanocyte stimulating hormone msh which goes and acts on the melanocytes in the amphibians and is obviously responsible for the production of the pigment melanin then you have oxytocin uh, which is secreted by the posterior pituitary that's your neurohypophysis which goes and acts on the muscles of the uterus leads to their relaxation for uh, you know the purpose of the uh, partum and very important it is controlling the release of anti diuretic hormone which is going to act on the kidney tubules so that uh, you know the kidney can control the absorption and the secretion of the water and the other uh, you know collecting molecules so these are the basic hormones okay so this is just to uh, tell you the feedback mechanism under which all the hormones how they are acting now uh, first of all uh, everything is under the neural control and that neural control is of the hypophysis so this is the neural control this circle is for the hypothalamus this is sending the now no uh, you know the neural signal to your pituitary so this signal is coming positive signal to the pituitary and pituitary you know uh, for example if it is coming for the anterior lobe so the anterior lobe is secreting the trophic hormone and trophic hormone is going to uh, you know act on the particular endocrine gland that is why we have this positive signal and then you know this that particular endocrine gland is also going to produce the hormone and that is going to undergo metabolism and that might go and bind to the binding protein and then it is going to finally go to the target organ where it is going to attach to the receptor that is present on the target organ and bring about the final action which is required for which the neural control actually send the neural signal now when the uh, you know particular action has been performed of what was required then the you know uh, signal is given by the target organ and this hormone you know sends a negative feedback to the pituitary gland and also it sends a negative feedback to the neural control to stop the production so uh, both ways the signal is sent the hypothalamus also receives the signal uh, to stop sending the messages to the pituitary gland and pituitary gland also receives the signal directly from the hormone and also from the hypothalamus to stop the production of the trophic hormone so this remains as a negative feedback mechanism which means that whenever uh, anything any hormone production is required in the body for performing any action that at that time the positive feedback is given and uh, the time when the uh, you know action has been performed at that time the uh, negative feedback is given and that action is uh, diminished by stopping the production of the trophic hormone and also by the neural regulation from the hypothalamus so first we talk about our hypophysis okay so we have this these are the two lobes of the pituitary gland that we see uh, are placed just below the hypothalamus so you have to remember that the posterior lobe is actually directly connected to the hypothalamus so hypophysis basically uh, refers to your the pituitary gland which is the master gland of your body and the disorders which are basically are related to hypophysis if you don't talk about